Q&A. Oh, shit. Wait. Do it one more time. Q&A. Monday. That's all Yay. we rehearsed. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still learning my percussion singing thing. Rhythmically. A little rhythmically we're challenged. We're a little off. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to our second weekly yes. Q&A Q &A Monday. Monday. Pia Toscano. Jared Lee. Who's got a birthday this week. I know. Um, oh, nice oh. sirens we have going that was on. Good, good timing. Hollywood. Birthday sirens. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for sending in some more questions. We checked them all out on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, everywhere else. Yes, and we're going to get to answering them. We, we do two from Twitter and two from... We try to do two, two from Facebook, two. but not everybody sends them in on Facebook. All right. Here we go. So we are going to answer Angie's question first. And you asked, how do you get, how do you all get used to the traveling and flying for events and how do you both remain healthy? Very good question. I struggled with this a lot when I first started because I wasn't used to the, like, the lack of sleeping and the crazy hours. Flying, there's so many germs, like, on planes and stuff. So many. So I would get sick really often. And, um, but basically I just try to lead a very, like, clean, healthy lifestyle. Um, I think I could say that for the both of us. I mean, no. he's constantly working T totally out. not true. The gym. But. Um... No, I think it's for us. You got to drink a lot of water. Yeah. Um, there are things you can do for your voice if you're experiencing issues like steaming it or trying to sleep more often. And um, with the flights, I think we're just used to it at this point. Yeah. We do the, the we do the L.A. New York flight a lot, a lot to go back to the East Coast. She's from the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast, and we have a lot of work on the East Coast, so we do that flight a lot. And I think for me, I kind of just stay. I try to stay on the LA time zone kind of yeah. when I'm there so that it doesn't really screw up your body and yeah, just taking care of your voice. Vitamins. Vitamins. Hydrate. Uh, doing vocal exercises and just... Rest yeah. as much as you can, but sometimes we, we really don't. Like when we were in New York for our cutting room show and had the Good Day New York thing, we were kind of like all thrown off with the time and had like an hour to sleep, but it's just like your body kind of just adjusts over time, so... Hopefully that's a good answer. We like that question, Angie. All right. Okay, next question, question number two is from my little Becca, and you asked, "Are you going to release any of the songs from the cutting room?" You okay. Start? You should start. The answer is yes. Yes. Uh, right now we're working on um, what we assume to be an EP that we're going to put out in the spring. We've got about eight or nine songs written that we're now producing and developing and we're going to write some more and my guess is that we're probably going to narrow it down to about five or six that we're going to put up in the spring that could change but that's kind of where our head's at right now and yeah and we're going to nashville on friday um to finish up and uh, work on on some songs, songs that you guys are familiar with but we're just you know putting production to that and but yes yeah, so a lot of the yeah. songs we did at the cutting room our songs that are in the mix for that so. EP that we're talking about. So. Yeah. So, yes. Next question is from Nick King, and you asked, who was the first artist to inspire you growing up? My, uh, the first artist to ever inspire me was Whitney Houston, and um, music was always around in my house. My, my sister was obsessed with the movie Bodyguard, and uh, so she had the Bodyguard soundtrack. Mm -hmm. the Costner first, just really delivered in that one. Yeah. It's a good movie. <laughs> the, but the first song I ever heard was I Will Always Love You um, and I'm Every Woman and uh, I would just listen to them over and over again and I remember being impacted by Whitney Houston from such a young age and I would um, you know try to imitate her and my dad would videotape me and some of those videos are up on YouTube but yeah oh, she was the first else. artist to ever inspire those. me Whitney Houston. I had, I, my parents bought me a karaoke machine when I was probably 11, and I got hooked on boys to men at the time, because my babysitter was from Philly, um, that lived with us in our house, and she, she showed me boys to men, and I kind of just got really, I was really obsessed with their harmonies and the whole group dynamic, and so I spent a lot of time trying to mimic those guys and everything they were singing and doing in their songs, and um, through them, I also discovered Brian McKnight, who I thought had the, just the most melodic, smooth, effortless voice. So those were two, uh, one group, one individual that I 
growing up um, listened to a lot and was trying to learn from. So. Yes. That's well, many I can others, definitely so. hear that from you, especially Brian, Brian McKnight and Boyz II Men. Okay, next question is from... Is this our fourth? My sweet We always law. do four, so this is the yeah. final. This is the final one. Lauren, final. you asked... Final question. If you had to choose one song to sing for the rest of your life, who Lit- would it says be? says listen to. Oh, my bad. If you Sorry had to choose that, one song to listen <laughs> to for cut the cut rest it, of your it, life, though. what would it be? That's a tough question. Okay, I've noticed right now I've been listening to a lot of Lana Del Rey, especially when I'm flying because it's so cinematic. I, I always gravitate towards like the more cinematic kind of productions and stuff. I also really love Coldplay, but um, Lana's music is so easy to listen to and it's very relaxing. So one song that I love of her is kind of ironic, but it's one of my favorite songs. It's called National Anthem. But it's not the national anthem. And Pia does a great job singing the national anthem. Thank you can you. catch her at the Kings game live every... I don't know. I sing uh, 20 games. Them. Next game is February 3rd. This is a very duff, duff, <laughs> tough question for me because I am I have a hard time with like superlative extreme statements. Like, this is yeah. my favorite That's thing. That's hard. This it is, is hard. Thing. Maybe. I love so much music and I love so much music from different artists. Uh, one song... One of the songs that I would I would listen to for the rest of my life is uh, "Every Breath You Take" by Wolf Stang and the Police. Yeah. Um, something about that song. I don't know. It's just I love it. I've always loved it, and I could always listen to it. I love "Desert Rose" by Sting. That's a good oh, yeah. song too. All Sting. But there's, I mean, there's so many. Yeah, it, there really are so many. Right now, I think it would be like, you know. That one that I said, Lana Del Rey, National Anthem, could be Blue Jeans, could be like Imagine, you know, from John Lennon, I don't know. Beatles, that's a great song. I mean, there's there's too many. There's so we would many. have to sit here and just go through lots and lots of songs. But that was a little window into our minds and some of our instinctive answers. And we thank you guys again so much for uh, asking your great questions. We're going to do this every Monday. Yes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. Spread the word. We are looking forward to getting some music together for everybody so okay we love you and please subscribe and ask more questions we'll see you next monday bye, bye.